and you keep on When the government announced school closures on Monday, at least one of our secondary schools in Bedbridge was still insisting all staff come into school to deliver remote learning on site rather than from home. We did feel um, that this was uh, due to a lack of trust, that teachers couldn't be trusted to deliver good quality education from home. Every teacher and every educator and support member of staff has the, you know, the best interests of our students at heart. This is why we do what we do. Boris Johnson's announcement came and there was still no response from the head teacher. We were then advised by our NEU regional officer that we were able to use section 44. If you feel that your environment is unsafe, you have a right not to go to work. So I invoke section 44 along with 25 other members of staff. There's been a lot of people who have decided to move away from a more general union like Unison and GMB to the NEU just because we were doing stuff. The NEU, I think their presence has been greatly felt in all kind of aspects of um, educators' life at the minute, in Redbridge in particular, and I think that's why a lot of them have come to join. Before COVID, we used to have branch meetings, general meetings, about 20 would be would be the average number of people attending. Our meetings are now attended by about over you know 200 members. At the start of the pandemic, we started contacting all the schools where we didn't have reps. And I think the, the concerns about safety was so high. Out of 77 schools in Redbridge, we went from having reps in 25 schools to over 60 schools. In primary settings especially, the reps numbers have always been significantly lower than, than secondary school. We've had a phenomenal increase in our primary school reps, as well as an incredible increase of membership. It's my numbers have doubled in our school and it's mainly support staff that have joined. We had a, a WhatsApp group which we put together and um, you know that's where a lot of the organising happened. I think the WhatsApp group that of the NEU branch in particular and all those hundreds that are part of it, hearing what others are having to experience and go through is, is what's making the union's presence even more important, I think. One of the things that we've done really, really well is just developing those really strong connections with our local representatives. Developing a, a really strong, like, unified body is what's really important. Redbridge has extremely high rates of infection. It's been close to the top in the country. Sometimes whole year groups of 250 students having to self-isolate. Sometimes staff members having to self-isolate in such large numbers that schools have had to close by default. Classroom teachers were increasingly being pulled for cover, which increasingly meant that we didn't have the time we needed to be able to plan, to be able to mark, to be able to like get the, just the general things done during the course of the day. You're more likely to get an older child tested than you are a younger child. So if the numbers were higher in secondary, why is nobody acknowledging the fact that numbers would be even higher in primary with children that are asymptomatic? In Redbridge, many of our families are actually three generational. So we've got many of our children in our school live with their grandparents. Some of our children have lost grandparents, great uncles and aunts, where they've got a very close relationship as well. So we've had to deal with a lot of that as well, having to pick up pieces. My concern is all of those problems are going to exist if we go back after the February half term, because again, the government hasn't listened to these concerns from the union. I just think that's disgusting that the government has put all this work on the head teachers and not really developed anything themselves. Because of that, you, you have to hope that you have an understanding head teacher who does the right thing. And it's a completely different response from all different head teachers. I've been really, really impressed with the leadership in my school. And I think our head teacher it has just been astounding. When the COVID crisis happened, it was made very clear that we were to work with her in creating what the system would be like and I think that's been fantastic and she's really listened to teachers. Our head teacher kept us in the loop and worked alongside us throughout the whole pandemic. She knew what the union's position was and she actually agreed with it. 
The government hasn't had any kind of sustained planning for school opening since March at all. It hasn't put in place the wider infrastructure to support a safe opening. So you needed mass testing. You need good internet for students who didn't have access to that. Students who don't have access to laptops, that needed to be in place. Extra office spaces, extra buildings, requisition so that we can cut down class sizes. Why don't you just give us the vaccination? Do all those core groups that need to get it done quickly, but then have teachers and educators there somewhere. If you're poor, it seems like the government is deliberately putting you in harm's way. That's not a government that cares about disadvantaged and vulnerable children at all. What the government need to do is they need to listen. I'm fed up of the government having a bunch of people that have no experience, no idea of schools, uh, making life changing decisions for schools. All COVID has done is highlight the flaws in our current education system. Bullying is rife and intimidation is rife. Their workload is just too much. Teachers are leaving the profession. Gavin Willison, you have no right to make decisions on education until you actually spend a whole day. You come in and you see what life is like in a school. You need to be able to see what the true challenges are. Listen to the people who are actually on the front line, actually doing this job. Because everything that he has said is based on an ideological position rather than a position that teachers are actually facing. You need to stop vilifying us in the press and asking for parents and carers to complain to Ofsted about online teaching. Decisions need to be made based on the safety of the community. It wasn't just safety of teachers. The National Education Union, for example, has come up with, from the very beginning, five tests to ensure that not only the school community but the whole community is safe. It also later on came up with a 10-point plan which addresses in a very comprehensive way all of the challenges we still face. I think the government is criminally negligent in the way they have handled the coronavirus pandemic and the decisions they have made have been criminally negligent and I think they should be held to account for that. And how long when we should be